Hi everybody, I'm Dean Atali, the shiny guy. Welcome back to Debugging with Dean, where I troubleshoot different shiny apps. Now, this video is going to be a continuation of a video I made last night, and you do need to watch that video first. So if you haven't, I'm going to put a link to the previous video in the description of this video, and you do need to pause right now and go watch that one first. Okay, if you're still here, then I'll assume that you did watch the previous video. So let me just give a quick recap. Last night, I was trying to troubleshoot a bug that was submitted to my package, Shiny.js. And through troubleshooting that one, I ended up finding out that Shiny had a bug in it. So the previous video was about how I found Shiny's bug and submitted a bug report to Shiny. And in that video, I also talked about how that bug that I found last night is quite significant. So I think that Chiny, the Chiny team is going to fix it pretty quickly. And then immediately after I recorded the video, I went ahead and I wanted to try to fix the bug so that I could submit a pull request to Shiny and so I could make another video showing you how I fixed the bug that I found. But by the time that I solved it, they had already solved it themselves as well. So they literally fixed the bug within like half an hour of me reporting it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I, someone who's not on the Shiny team, tried solving a bug in Shiny's complicated code base. Let's begin, as we usually do when debugging, with the actual bug report. So this is the bug report that I opened last night. And I said that there's a regression bug in the development version of Shiny where the once argument of the observe event function causes a fatal error. So let's see again what the actual problem is. Now, I'm currently on the CRAN version of Shiny, so I'm not going to get the bug right now, but it's good because I want to show you what the once parameter actually does. So let's first see what happens when we don't use the once parameter. All we have here is a simple app that when you click go, we we show a message. And so every time we click go, we'll see a message being uh, printed. Now what the once parameter does is that after this observer runs once, it'll get destroyed and it will never run again. So again, this is on the CRAN version of Shiny. So this is a stable version that doesn't have the bug. If I press on go, we see the message. But any other time that I press, there's no more messages because it only runs once. So that's what this parameter does. Now, what the bug report says is that when we use once equals true in the latest version of uh, Shiny, the one on GitHub, this causes an error. Now, to see that, I'm going to now switch to the latest version of Shiny. And I actually already have Shiny, the Shiny package, downloaded on my own machine because um, recently I made another video where I submitted a PR to Shiny. So I had to download Shiny and work on it myself. So I already have it loaded into my R Studio. So I'm just going to press Control Shift L to load the latest version of Shiny. And so now I have the development version. And now if I run the same code, I click Go and we see that we get an error. So this is the bug that I, that I uh, submitted to Shiny last night. So where do we even begin? Now the Shiny package is a pretty complicated package and it's not one that I wrote. Um, so I didn't quite know what to do to begin. And when people open bugs against my own packages, I usually have a very good intuition of where exactly I should look and how to fix it right away. But in this case, I don't know how, your, how the observe event function works, and I'm not familiar with the internals of Shiny that well, so I didn't quite know where to go. So the first thing I usually try to do is I go into the function that has the error, and I want to see if there's anything just like blaringly obvious that is causing the problem. So let's look for the observe event function and see if we can find anything useful. So this is where the observe event function is defined we see that once is a parameter here with the default being false. And of course, when we set it to true, that's when we get a bug. And looking in here, let's see when once is being used. Goes into here, and then there's this bind event function. And if we click into here, we go somewhere else. Now, this took me 
into a little bit of a rabbit hole. I didn't quite know where I am anymore. Um, again, I'm not familiar with this code base. So I wanted to try a different approach. Another way that I sometimes start my debugging process when I'm not familiar with the code base is something that we can only do when we do have version control. So this is an example of why putting your code in version control, such as Git, is very important. Because we know that the last version of Shiny on CRAN does work, and we know that currently it doesn't work, we can just go back in the commits on Git until we find a point where it did work, and we can see exactly what changes happened when it broke it. So if we find the exact commit that introduced this bug, and we see that that commit has, let's say, 10 lines that changed, we know that something about those changes is what caused the bug. Now, there isn't really a perfect way to search for that offending commit that introduced the issue. You just have to kind of do a binary search sort of and, and kind of go backwards and forwards in time until you zone in into the, the commit that caused the issue. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back into the Shiny GitHub page and let's look at the commits. So we know that the latest commit, well, the latest commit is when Winston actually fixed it, but the one before that is when things were broken. So let's just go to the bottom of this page and let's select the last commit here that was only, you know, 10 days ago. Let's take this commit and see if it was still broken at that point. So back to our studio and let's do a git checkout for that commit. Oh, we should close those files, sure. I've now reverted my version of Shiny in our studio to what it was at this commit, at this time on uh, November 5th. So let's see if it still happens. So let's reload the package locally and rerun the app. Is it still broken? Yes, it's still broken at this point. Okay, so we know that in this commit it was still broken. So let's go to the previous page. Now, again, I'll just go all the way down. Let's choose this one. And I'll do the same thing. Let's do a git checkout for this commit. Reload Shiny. And again, try to run it. Is it still broken? Nope, at this point it actually works. So this means that somewhere along on this page, on this page of commits, there was a, an offending commit that broke it. So we know that this one is the one that worked. Let's just choose a random one. Let, and we have to remember which one it was. So we remember that the one with, that's uh, 77A8, you can also put it in a little notepad on the side to remember that. So the commit with hash 77A8 was fine. Now let's go somewhere in the middle here and see what happens with this one. Git check out this one, reload Shiny, and run the app again. Here it still works. Okay, so 6AAF, we're still okay. Let's go a little bit higher. Let's go here. Git checkout, reload Shiny, and rerun the app. Now it's broken. So now we're really zoning in. So we know that somewhere between this, we know that in this commit, the code was working fine. And we know that here it wasn't. So it's somewhere in these several commits. Now what I would do now is I would look at the message logs, at the commit logs. And this is where writing good commit messages comes in handy because if you don't write a commit message and all it says is added a file or modified a file, you'll have no idea what actually happened in those commits. And you would have to go and look into each one of them to know what you did. Uh, but Winston did a good job of um, adding proper messages here. So for example, this one says he just documented in this commit. So we know it's not going to be this commit that made a problem. But there's quite a few commits here that seem substantial. So we don't know which one exactly it is. So what we'd, we, we would have to do is, again, just kind of click on a few of them and then see exactly when it broke. Now, I already know which one because I've done this yesterday. So it was actually this commit right here. And just to prove it, I'll show you that when we go to B25D, Let's check out this one, git check out this commit, rerun. Here the app was working fine, but if we go to this one, to the next one, 
now things got broken. Sorry, I had to uh, close my app. Wait, I can't type for some reason. All right, let's. This terminal is dead. I don't know why. This is a bug. Let's try to close that terminal and open a new one. Okay, so as you can see, even our studio the IDE has bugs <laughs> sometimes. All right, so now I went to the commit that I know is the offending commit. And when I run, yes, now it broke. So because this one had no bug and this one had a bug, we know that this is where something happened. So let's see what happened in this issue. So we know that this commit is the one that introduced the bug. And honestly, even if we don't want to go any further, we could also just um, copy this commit and put a link to that in the bug report and that could already be very helpful. So when you submit bug reports, if you're able to find out exactly what commit caused the bug, that can be very useful to whoever wrote that package. But in this case, let's try to go a little bit further. And, and also remember that they actually already fixed the bug, so I don't need to, to do anything with this. When we look what actually happened in this commit, let's try to see where the once argument got used. So the once argument was here in the signature of the function before, and it still is. It looks like they just added a new argument here, the ellipsis. So that didn't really change at all. Nothing happened there. The next place it was used is here. If once was true, which that's when the bug is happening, previously they destroyed some object named O on exit. So just to kind of get a little bit of a bearing here, let's see what O is. O is an observer with a hybrid chain inside of it. It looks a bit complex, so I'm not going to try to understand exactly what it is, but I just wanted to get a slightly better idea of, of where the once argument was being used. So whatever that observer was, that got destroyed when once was being used. And where else is once being used? Right here. So this is new code. That didn't exist before. It's being passed into this with event function. This means that, and, and, and there's no other places, by the way. So that means that we should probably go look into this with event function. So let's go back to our studio. And let's see with event. So I think this is the same place that we looked last time, except last time we were I was very confused. I didn't even know if I should look here, but now I have a better idea that this is probably the right place to look. So let's see where once happens here. There's a once here. Here we see a very similar piece of code to what we had before, to, to the one that was removed in the commit. And if you look at the error message, we're seeing that there's an error saying object X is not found. And here we see that we're trying to do something on an object called X. So this to me is a good indication that maybe this is where there's a bug. Let's put a browser statement here and now reload Shiny and see if that's actually where the bug is happening. Let's click on go. Now we're here, let's see what X is. X doesn't exist. We literally found the bug now. We know why we were getting an error. Because when once is true, we get into this line and it's trying to destroy something that doesn't exist. This is very good. Um, I could have submitted this. I could have added this information to the bug report and that would be a very good help for them. That would tell them exactly what line they should be looking at to fix. But we could also go one step further. Now, before I do go any further, I want to mention that even when I was doing this last night, I honestly was not even sure if I was going to fix it the right way. I thought that I'm going to try to get rid of the bug, get rid of the error, but I knew that there's a chance that what I was doing is not the correct solution. Because Shiny has so many layers of abstraction and complexity, it's not that intuitive for someone who's not deeply familiar with the code base to just go in and within 20 minutes understand what's going on. Sometimes you need to really look at all the functions and try to have a better understanding of how everything fits together. So keeping that in mind, when I looked at this line and I saw that there's an X dollar sign destroy here and that that causes an error, 
I also remembered that in the commit, there was a very similar line that got removed. So this line did exist before, and it did work. So that kind of made me think that perhaps something here, so perhaps this should work, but maybe something here is just like not quite right. So I wanted to look what X is. And so I scrolled a little bit up. And X is an argument into this function. And then if we go back to the commit that was removed, remember when I, when I wanted to see what gets destroyed here, what that O object is? Well, the O object was an observer that was created. And if I go back to the current code, I see something very similar here, but that's assigned into the res object. So perhaps that x dollar sign destroy should really be a res dollar sign destroy. It's possible that this code was taken from a, a different place. It was copied into here. The, ver the name of the variable was changed, but they forgot to change x to res. Now, again, I don't know if this is true. I don't know if this is the right way to fix it, but I'm going to try this. I'm going to see if this solves the issue and I'm going to see if this use if this makes the once argument function properly and if it does then I was going to tell shiny about it so all I did right now was change x to res let's try reloading shiny now and rerunning the app and that actually fixed it so this was the PR that I was going to submit and then if we actually look at the PR, sorry, not the PR, at the, uh, the commit that Winston made before I had time to, to submit it. That is exactly what, what he did. So that was right. Um, and he also added a test for it. So that's a very, very good practice to do. Every time you get a bug in your own app or in your own package, add a test for it so that you won't get that bug again. Okay, so that was great. Um, I actually kind of enjoy trying to debug problems in other people's code, especially when it is quite complex. I find it kind of like like a puzzle. But I know that if it's if it's your first time trying to to find a bug in someone else's code like this, it might be a bit intimidating and, and overwhelming because you just like have no idea where to even look. So this is, you know, this is one of the reasons I'm doing these videos so that you can see how, how I go about this. And hopefully with enough of these, it'll start making you feel more comfortable trying to tackle these things as well. So if you have any comments, if you think you would have um, done this any differently, if you want to say anything about this video, feel free to let me know. And please do subscribe so that you'll get all my next videos. That's it for now. Bye.